Alright, I am prepping bell pepper, green bell pepper for dehydration. All those bell peppers we got at the farmer's market, I make sure none of it goes to waste. I start out with um, washing. I soak them for a couple hours in water, a sink full of water with about a cup of white vinegar. That's going to take any of the soil, if any chemicals, fertilizers, stuff like that, and wax, which we try to stay away from the wax product produce. <clears throat> After soaking them, I rinse them again in a second thing of water, just plain water then. The vinegar doesn't affect the taste of, you know, your, your produce, and I do fruits the same way. It just really gets them clean. Then, uh, after draining them, I start prepping them. None of it goes to waste. I have um, a little bit of a unique way that I start them so that I am harvesting the seeds. After I have the fan running, not only to keep me cool, but it kind of dries out the seeds a little bit while I'm prepping. And if you look over here, you'll see I already have several thousand seeds in the first five bell pepper. Um, but since I'm doing a mass quantity, I figure I'll put them up here, let them start air drying. They just pop right off. You just skim your, your fingernail over them and they, they pop off. So everybody cuts their vegetables up different. I, on the other hand, have gotten this many out of about a dozen bell pepper. And I cut them anywhere from a quarter inch to um, just a little over a quarter inch. It makes good for the dehydrator. Um, takes about four to five hours to dehydrate uh, nine trays of these at one time. Therefore, I do all my prepping first. But the way I like to cut up the bell peppers, I'll take my knife and I'll go usually right below where the stem comes out. And what does that do? It leaves me a, a full top. Well, if it's not all bruised up and, and soft like going bad, which these are not, I just cut those off and I chunk them up. This is what I will use, uh, bag them up, usually a pint at a time, and I save them, I freeze these, because I'll use these for my uh, cooking for canning, like my salsa, my chili, and my spaghetti all have bell peppers. So what I do is I ziplock these into pint bags. I use these for my homemade soups, I can hamburger soup, uh, vegetable soup, my homemade salsa, uh, chili, marinara sauce for spaghetti, a um, lot of uses. So none of this bell pepper will go to waste. I even have the chickens, uh, some that I don't use in here. But what I do is once I put these into pint size, I mark me a gallon Ziploc bag that um, tells me what they are and the date that I put them in. If I don't do it uh, in smaller bags, this, this helps me not to waste any and thaw out more than I need. I take a Ziploc out. I do onions the same way. I just know one pack to a pot of whatever I'm cooking. And it's just easier that way. A lot of times, um, if I'm, it's starting to be canning season for me, I will do the vacuum seal, which these will last a lot longer. But since I know I'm the beginning of my canning season, I save time and money just by doing my, my Ziplocs. I do my bananas that way. I do my onions that way. Um, I like not just juicing, but I do smoothies. So, bananas, stuff like that, I use the snack size Ziplocs. Doesn't waste it. Once again, I'm not taking out more than I don't need. Now, back to how I cut my, my bell pepper to where I'm not wasting any. 
Okay, so it, for me to harvest the seeds, I've been doing bell pepper now probably three or four years, and this by far is the easiest, and I'm not giving the chickens all these seeds, <laughs> and I'm not throwing them in the trash either. As long as they are a non-GMO seed, um, no hybrid seeds, meaning that they're hybrid, you get one chance. After you grow and you harvest, the seeds are no good. Compared to hair heirloom seeds, you can continue to use them over and over through each new harvest you have. That's why I'm harvesting fresh carrots. Once these little green stalks, leaves start coming out, I then put them into the dirt. Same thing with my celery. I do the same thing. That's only 24 hours after being chopped um, that I have the new growth on there. Um, anyway, I'm sorry. Back to how I cut it. I just go down the sides. That's perfect. It doesn't harm the seeds. Those are usually about the length and the size. I just continue going around it. Continue going around. This one kind of messed up. But, anyway. Now, all of that's usable. So I'm not wasting what's at the end here on the bottom. I simply cut that off or pull it. See all the seeds? Just, just hundreds of them. So once again, I lay them up here to kind of air dry a little bit. Makes it even easier and not so sticky. I get as much of the green as possible. I just pop this off around the bottom. That's all usable. I put into my Ziploc bag, which I gotta get another one. All of this here and where it goes up into the bell pepper, this is the yummies that my, my girls, my chickens will get. I just cut it up into smaller pieces so that it'll fit in their little beaks. They can digest a little easier. Like I said, none of the bell peppers go to waste. Okay make this a little faster um, take a break from cutting I'm going to take my probably about two pounds two pounds of bell pepper all I do is I take my trays these are I have nine trays part of my I don't forgot the name of my dehydrator it's been a long day Excalibur very 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 good quality very nice uh, dehydrator. So, what I'm doing, the trays are all square, of course, and they come with this mesh. Now, because I want uh, to do these quicker and I'm not having anything that I'm afraid is going to fall through these tiny holes, this dehydrator comes with this film and it prevents. Uh, like my tomatoes, when I do tomatoes, it keeps the tomato seeds from going through this mesh. You do it one time, you learn real quick. It's hard picking seeds out of this mesh. These uh, films can also, I lay them right across the top. I can actually do liquid on these. I have done homemade um, fruit roll-ups, strawberry. They don't go off the side, and it's really, really, really good because I know what I put in them. All right, so I just take a handful of these. I used to do it one by one. Not anymore, I do mass production here. Take about two handfuls, and I'm just spreading them out. You gotta have really good airflow. I've noticed, uh, try not to let them touch very much, um, and don't overfill your trays you get a better product a lot quicker. So, as long as they are laying to where they don't stick up between touching another tray or you go to slide it in and half your product um, slides right off. Kind of trial and error, been there, done that. So, once I get my trays about that full, I come over here to the dehydrator. This is a permanent home. I start at the top. See how they're catching? Some of them will slide. 
I'm just going to cheat if I'm going to go to the second one. I don't think I'll have nine trays. Slides in there. Like I said, it's a nine tray holder. When it's time to start the dehydrator, this lid fits into some grooves. Only one way it'll fit. Once it's not moving, it has a temperature control and a timer. The timer can go up to 12 hours. When I'm doing beef jerky, deer jerky, chicken jerky, here's the thermostat. I like to keep mine wide open, okay, which is about, you, uh, I can't see the numbers, but it's, it's well over 125 to 150 degrees. The timer, once I said, goes to 12 hours. Um, I will set it because I know by experience, four to five hours, my peppers will be done. Um, I have a jar of peppers and onions I like to show you that I just did two days ago, dehydrating. All right, these are my sweet peppers. They were yellow, orange, red. It took five to six hours to dehydrate. They're very, very skinny. I don't think this thing is auto focusing, but they're very lightweight. They're, um, like I said, you can hear them. You want to get as much moisture as possible because any moisture and you're not refrigerating these, they mold and you just wasted all your pro, you know, your produce, your time, and of course electricity to do so. I do have, because I'm gonna use these very quick, I'm not putting an oxygen absorber in these. These are the onions. Believe it or not, this is a pound of peppers. See how condensed it is. These are my onions. These were four large onions, and because I don't use these onions as quickly, I did put an oxygen absorber in them. But once again, very lightweight, small, and when you're cooking with dehydrated vegetables like this, when you do your recipes, I only need like a pinch, basically, of this, and it gives off so much flavor. It's not like chopping up a half an onion per recipe, or like I did with those bell peppers. This is hamburger meat. This is about five pounds of hamburger. And it's actually vacuum sealed, so I'm not gonna open it, but you can look in there. And as you could tell with our chili we made, our neighbor, we, we fed the neighbor some of our chili. He didn't realize the hamburger until I told him uh, was from dehydrated burger. And I also do chicken, chicken breast white meat, dark meat, doesn't matter. Same thing, these are vacuum sealed so I'm not gonna open it. Um, usually a half a cup of dehydrated will equal about a full cup of hamburger or chicken in a recipe. I use this for chicken noodle soup, I use it for chicken and rice, which is one of my favorites, or chicken and dumplings. Um, Cameron and I are going to be doing some blogging, vlogging of uh, meals in a jar. It's going to have all your vegetables, your seasonings, meat if you add meat. And if you notice, we, we, we have a lot of eggs. Our girls put out anywhere from 14 to 17 eggs a day. I freeze them. There is a specific way to freeze them so you don't damage or ruin, once again, ruin your product. Um, I've also dehydrated. Bear with me a minute. Don't laugh. It stinks. This is 15 dozen of eggs. One teaspoon, not table, one teaspoon of powder egg equals one hard egg. Uh, large egg, might I add. Um, bacon, making homemade breads, homemade cakes from scratch that doesn't have it in a box. Um, I find uses for this. 
plus we were overwhelmed in eggs. You can only sell and eat so many. But powder, powder egg, works. Okay, y'all, thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully it was interesting. Um, if you have any questions how we do things, um, things you might want to see us do, especially with canning, dehydrating, preparations, um, let us know. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks. See you next time.